What's up, everybody? Doc Doc 1985. There's levels to this. Our subscription services making you a worse gamer. What an amazing question. This question was asked by Cowboy from the channel King of Content. Go check him out. He had a podcast today. I think it ran around four hours. And I was able to hop in sometime towards the middle, towards the end, where I was able to give my opinion on this topic and we had some fun and all that other stuff. But I want to I I talk. I told him I was going to make a video about this because I really like this topic. So in order to determine whether or not subscription service are making you a worse gamer, you have to identify what type of gamer you were before subscription services. So that's what I'm going to do with you right now so you understand where I'm coming from. Okay, I don't know if the answer is a is a blatant yes or no. What I can tell you is that subscription services have definitely changed the way that I game. Okay, so let me explain this to you. Before I subscribed to Game Pass and before I subscribed to PS Plus, I used to subscribe to PS Now as well after I subscribed to Game Pass. But before that, the way I used to consume games was I would wait for games to hit the GameStop. $20 $20 bin. My typical uh, model was I wasn't paying over $20 for a game. Buying a game brand new was pretty much non existent for me. I'm just being honest with you. I would show up to GameStop from time to time and I would look at the two for 20, uh, the two for 10, uh, whatever, two for 35, wh- whatever it was. Okay. was typically my threshold, which means that I would play games way after they had came out. Now, the type of gamer that I was before is I really wasn't big into multiplayer games. I was big into single player story, heavy story driven narrative games, right? So the PS4 for me was an amazing console. Not only that, but the amount of time that I had to play was not the same as the amount of time that I have to play right now. Okay, life circumstances were a little bit different then. So financially, things were different and time wise, things were different. So that affected the way that I gamed a lot more. I enjoyed my time with my PS4, but I was okay playing a game way after it came out. And I I wasn't even tracking when games were dropping or anything like that. Fast forward to this generation, and it just so happened that uh, I moved, my financial situation changed, everything happened to change around the same time that the new generation started, and uh, my uh, my YouTube channel actually started picking up around the same time as I moved. With all that happening, Game Pass was what I subscribed to once I went ahead and purchased my Xbox Series X. I might have had Game Pass maybe a a few months before I actually got my Xbox Series X, but I really got heavy into Game Pass once I got my Xbox Series X. And my Xbox Series X allowed me to continue what I was doing with the the GameStop model, meaning I would only buy games that were $20 or less, right? However, now you're looking at $15 a month and the amount of games that I have are way more than the selection of the GameStop games that were $20 or less. Okay. Not only that, but when I was at GameStop and I was purchasing these games for $20 or less, right? I'm talking about used games now. Okay. I was very specific as to what games I was going to buy. I knew exactly the type of games that I liked. Remember, I liked single player story driven narrative games. Uh, mostly shooters and first-person shooters. That's it. So first-person shooters, uh, single-player, story narrative game, and shooters. So Uncharted was a huge fan of Uncharted. Grand Theft Auto V was a huge fan of Grand Theft Auto V, single-player. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, anything that was single-player, pretty much, I, I was really a fan of. All right? I actually really liked The Last of Us as well, Okay, the first one. With all that being said, now I have... Game Pass, which is showing me the same, similar to the same price, $15 a month. However, the amount of games that I get to play are a lot more. Now, remember, I'm already used to playing old games. So I remember during the beginning of the generation when people would say to me, oh, you got an Xbox, you're only playing old games, all this other stuff. It really wouldn't bother me. I didn't understand why that was a knock, the fact that I like to play old games. To me, a game wasn't old if I never experienced it. 
it was a new experience to me. It, did, it didn't, it didn't matter. If I never played it, it was a new experience to me. Okay. So I was able to run through all the halos back to back to back, all the gears back to back to back, two Ori's, okay, Hellblade, uh, Quantum Break, Sunset Overdrive, Rise of Rome, uh, Psychonauts 1 and 2. The amount of games that I've been able to play because of Game Pass has been astronomical, has been amazing. Now, because of Game Pass, I have also been able to pick games that are more of my genre that I like, like first-person shooters. Like, for instance, Battlefield 3 I played on Game Pass. It was the first time I've never played that game. Um, like I said, all the Halos, first-person shooters, I played those on Game Pass, right? Um, and then I was able to try games that I would have never even looked at. A game like Psychonauts would have never hit my radar. A game like Sunset Overdrive would have never hit my radar, right? Uh, a game like Yakuza would have never hit my radar. I would have never tried it. But I was able to try all these games, okay? And it opened up more genres of gaming to me. So like Chorus as well. I played Chorus. Uh, again, if you follow me, if you've been following me for a while and you follow me on Twitch, you've seen all the different types of games that I have played. And I have had a blast as well as still being able to play the games that I like to play. So for instance, I was a huge fan of Horizon Zero Dawn. I think Horizon Zero Dawn is a really good game. And I thought that I would like Horizon Forbidden West just as much. I was still able to try Horizon Forbidden West, still bought it because that's the type of games that I like. I just didn't like it as much as Zero Dawn, but I still was able to play that game. Same thing with... Um, uh, games like Ratchet and Clank. I tried Ratchet and Clank. I was able to buy it. It's a shooter game. I consider it a shooting game, but I guess it's platforming. I just didn't like it as much either, right? However, Game Pass, what I've realized, hasn't restricted me from being able to game how I want. If anything, it's opened me up a lot more. Now, on this podcast that I was in with uh, Cowboy... Uh, the king of content. Uh, shout out to King Thrash was on there. TK9 was on there. Maker of Chaos was on there. Holtz was on there. They um they made it seem as if Game Pass was restricting me. And I was trying to let them see like, no, Game Pass is not restricting me. If anything, it's opened me up to a lot more. They made it seem, uh, especially, I don't want to put words in people's mouth, but Cowboy was the one that said, you play whatever's on Game Pass. And unfortunately for him, he's extremely incorrect. I've played plenty of games that have not been on Game Pass. I've played PlayStation games that have not been on Game Pass. i played Pokemon games. Those are definitely not on Game Pass. I'm playing Breath of the Wild right now. That's not on Game Pass. So Game Pass hasn't stopped me from playing other games. I don't feel obligated to only play Game Pass games. And even, and even on the actual Xbox console, I played Red Dead Redemption, the first one, wasn't on Game Pass. I bought that game. Again, it's an old game, but for me, it was new. It was a new experience, and I ex really liked Red Dead Redemption. So the whole concept of Game Pass holding people back is a, is a flawed concept. Now, there might be people out there that pay for the subscription service and feel like I will not play anything else because I've... I got games here that I got to play, and that's fine, but I'm just letting you know from my perspective, I will play whatever I want to play, and Game Pass has allowed me to try many different things to where now if I see a game that's intriguing, even though it might not be my genre, I might give it a shot. I might give it a shot, right? So does Game Pass make me a worse gamer? It does not. It does not make me a worse gamer. The thing that Game Pass does do for me, though, is, and I have to be honest with you, a game that comes to Game Pass that's not up to my level or it's not a good game, I am very quick to simply not play it, uninstall it, play something else, and this is where the flaw comes in, not really complain about it. It'll just be like, oh, that game's not good. And then they'll say, I move on. Versus if I would have bought a game and the game wasn't good, I would be more compelled to actually let the world know, hey, this game is not good because I actually spent money on it, wasted way more time going to the store, having to go back and return it if I didn't like it, all that other stuff. So there is 
a difference there. So as far as making me a better or a worse gamer, I would argue Game Pass has overall made me a better gamer. The things that I used to value in gaming, those aren't the things I only value. I don't only value graphics. I don't only value story. Now I value gameplay a lot more. Now I value multiplayer aspect of gaming a lot more. And that is a huge part to Game Pass and what I've got, the chance of the games that I've gotten to experience on Game Pass. So I'm curious to know, has Game Pass or, or subscription services, period, do you feel like they've made you? I want to know how, what, what, what has it done to you? Take a, a, a reflective view of this. Look at how it has affected you. And if you're someone that has Game Pass, but you still buy games full price, you still buy whatever you want full price, then I want you to be honest and you can say Game Pass hasn't affected me as a gamer. I still play games on Game Pass when they come out on Game Pass and I still buy games full price when I want to buy them full price. And if that's you, then I want to see again what the consensus is in the comments because I want to see how exactly Game Pass is hurting the gaming industry if it's not really changing you as for me for my money understand this the developers were not getting my money period i was buying used games i need you to understand that so the developers were not getting my money now whether it's a quarter 10 cents or a penny of the 15 dollars that i spent to game pass the developers, the publishers, someone is getting my money. Not only that, but because of Game Pass, I have purchased more games than I have ever purchased from the digital store, brand new, whatever. I do not remember. I want to make sure I'm correct. Yep. I do not remember the last time I went to GameStop and purchased a used game. I want to know how you possibly being a game as gamer or, or a subscription service gamer are hurting the industry. And if you're not, be honest. I know I'm not. Because I wasn't giving the industry any money anyways. I was giving GameStop money for the used games. Doc Dark went on A5. There's levels to this. I hope this video makes sense. And uh, I hope you understand what the questions that I'm asking. We out. Peace.